What's going on, everybody? Welcome to NFL Red Alert. And right now, we're going to talk about what happened in that debacle with the Monday Night Football game with the New York Giants and the Detroit Lions. Now, as you can see in that photo, that's pretty much what the night was. Um, Eli Manning got no protection. Uh, Eric Flowers, I'm not sure about what's going on with him. I do, knew, I, I do know that he signed uh, an extension, and um, I'm starting to wonder exactly what the Giants are doing. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the real reason that the New York Giants are currently 2-0. I'm, what? I mean, 0-2, oh excuse me. I know Giant fans got happy for a second. 0-2, oh my correction. Uh, and reality, by the way. Correction and reality. Um, the number one reason, McAdoo. All right, now, let me explain why McAdoo, the head coach, is the major issue. All this man has done since this season has started is run his mouth. Now, we all know, right? When you're playing in the National Football League, it's all about what you do on the field. And I don't think that he's setting the right example for the team. And let me explain, right? You got OBJ on the team. And, and, and OBJ is one of the most fortunate men to ever walk this earth. Uh, he made a catch that was probably one of the most... I guess it would have to probably be one of my top two catches ever. Uh, because Randy Moss did some really, really good ones as well. And that that's my dude right there. But I have to give OBJ a lot of credit for that catch that he made on Brandon Hughes' car. Now, after that catch, OBJ became something that we've never seen. And that just goes to show you, when you have your opportunity and it's there and you see it, you seize the moment. And OBJ has done everything that he needed to do. He's created his brand. He's done everything, right? Okay. In doing so, it's turned him into something else that I don't want to say he's not a good teammate, but a lot of people that are in that Giants locker room feel that he's all about himself, okay? That is another issue with the Giants. Um, the Giants not paying him, and then he's making all these things about, you know, um, you know, I got a high ankle sprain, I might be out four to eight weeks. That's a distraction. Brandon Marshall dropping a wide open pass along the sideline. He's supposed to be a veteran and trying to help showed these young guys how it's done. But he's a bum. And th this is what I'm saying. And then on top of all of that, you know, like I said, the Giant, the giant defense is a really, really good defense. And they're, they're like the least of the problem right now. Okay? Now, it's not much they can do because the way they started off with that touchdown for Marvin Jones Jr. and stuff like that, um, I wasn't expecting the Lions to win this game. I was just I, I was expecting it to be a close game and the Giants somehow, some way finding a way to win after that ridiculous loss that they took to the Cowboys. So as I watched this game, I realized something. It's also not Eli Manning's fault. Because when Eli Manning had a clean pocket, he delivered the ball where it should be. But when you're continuously being it's like he had, you know, steak on his chest and they were lions. Like I, I don't understand. Is Ezekiel Ansen all the, the rookie middle linebacker? I look. It starts with it starts with Ben McAdoo. I don't know what he's doing and why he's continuing to run his mouth. But at some point, people are gonna have to realize that both, well, all three of the of the New York teams right now, the Bills, the Giants, and the Jets. I don't know what they're doing. And if you're a New York fan right now, you're probably like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do I go? I was in my barbershop. Like, before the season started, uh, late August. And dudes were like, yo, look, man, I've been a Jet fan my whole life. I'm, no, I'm not doing it this year. I'm out. I'm going to be a Giant fan. The next time I go to the barbershop, they're probably going to be Bills fans. And they, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so bad with the way that things are going on. And, I, and when there's no one to turn to, there's no leadership, there's no run game, there's nobody on that Giants team right now that can really say, look, do as I do. Including OBJ. Because... I understand that you have to get your money. I, listen, I, uh, I support the way that these players go after their money because at the end of the day, these owners are making their money regardless. That's not my issue. My issue is about how you do it. And the one thing I can tell you about being a teammate in college, high school, stuff like that, you can't make it about you. It's sort of like this. You see like how J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt is probably going to be an issue for that Texans defense soon. Because it doesn't matter what everybody else does. If J.J. Watt runs out, to the, like, runs out to the field and farts, he makes more news than anybody else on the field. That's an issue. That, remember, you're dealing with grown men. I don't know how he downplays it and stuff like that, but you can see it. Even when he tries to celebrate with his teammates after plays, 
they they look kind of standoffish. And I'm just saying it visually because I've been in locker rooms. I've seen it. I know how this works. Um, I can pick up on it. It depends on how, because there's been great players that didn't act like that and, and show, like Calvin Johnson, when he was with the Lions, right? Everybody knew he was the best player on that team. You didn't get that feel like he was making it all about him. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, Barry Sanders, like when you watch Barry Sanders play, even with Randy Moss when he had Chris Carter, everybody knew Randy Moss was that guy. But it wasn't until later in his career where he started to act a little crazy off the field and stuff like that and did different things like that. It wasn't that type of situation. So the way the Giants right now is built in the locker room to start, the way that the coaching situation is, the way that... It just seems like nobody is trying to feed off of anybody. And the biggest thing that they should have had was their defense. And they don't even have that right now because the Lions are just doing whatever they want. The special team run back. Like, they, they, they don't have anything going on right now. So, as much as you want to pay OBJ after the first game when you said, yeah, they had no offense, but OBJ didn't play, and this and that, OBJ played yesterday. You see what I'm saying? And he wasn't even a major stat line. Evan Ingram was a major stat line getting his first touchdown. Like, I, I don't... Th this is what my issue is. The New York Giants, they've always been that team that'll turn it up late in the season. Even when they won the Super Bowls with Eli, they'll turn it up, somehow go in there as a wild card, not good of a record or whatever like that. But they're 0-2, bro. You know, 0-1, 0-2, 1 in the division with the Cowboys. Like, you, bro, people need to start to understand, right? When you look at the teams that have success, there's a certain type of formula that's going on in there. If you look at the Broncos, you look at the, the hierarchy, you see that the Patriots are at the top, there's a certain type of consistency that these players play with, and they know what's expected of them. Do your job. A lot of people are going to blame Eli for some of the things that he did, you know, getting sacked, all that stuff like that. Eric Flowers is a joke. The O-line, pew, pew. I don't know if he said. I, I, I don't know if that's how you say his name. Pew pew. I, I, look, he disgusted me. The O line is trash. And then another thing I have a, a question about. If you guys are watching the game, right? Eric Flowers is having a lot of trouble with Ezekiel Ansah, but then they're lining the running back up on the opposite side. Now, if they were going to flank him out real quick and throw the ball to him, you know, get it out quick, I would understand that. But they didn't. They were having some type of uh, some play where they had. You know, Evan Ingram going, you know, on a post in the on a post in the slot. They had the uh, you know, Brandon Marshall on the outs and the uh, OBJ on the outside on the right. Why is the running back blocking on the right side when the left tackle is having so many issues? I, I don't see and I really don't understand, and I've never understood, even when the Giants have won the Super Bowl in most cases, sometimes the Giants just do things that you're like, yo, what are you guys doing? Do you not see what they're doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm trying to analyze it. I'm saying to myself, what the F am I watching? Like, this game sucks. And, and keep in mind, I, I don't care. Listen, regardless of who won the game, that's not what, you know, I'm not a Giant fan. I'm not a Lions fan. I'm a football fan. I want to see good football. The New York Giants has decent talent. It shouldn't be like this. They shouldn't be getting mollywhopped like this in this type of fashion. This just shouldn't be happening. But for some reason, people don't seem to realize it starts with the head coach. The head coach is acting like, you know, he's a spokesman for, for you know, for a comedy club. He's making jokes about, you know, Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. If he doesn't have a place to run, they all run the same with running back. Like, he's doing all this stuff. What's happening on the field, though? Because that's all everybody really cares about, what happens on the field. That's all that anybody cares about. And they're not making plays. They're not doing anything like they're supposed to be doing. So when you look at it in that format, it's a very interesting thing. But I'm not ready to count the Giants out yet. As much as everybody's doing that, and oh, oh fire, this guy, fire. I Listen, I still think they have enough talent to compete in that division. And the Cowboys just took a very tough loss too. We don't know how that's going to affect them. We have to wait to see what happens next week. But I'm not ready to say the Giants are out. I'm, I'm not there yet. But I will tell you, that I'm disgusted with their play. It was a horrible display. Uh, Brandon Marshall should be ashamed of himself. Um, OBJ, non-factor. They obviously have no run game. The offensive line is trash. Um, it's a lot of problems. But I also think that somebody needs to sit down with Ben McAdoodoo 
and figure out what his problem is and why he loves to talk so much and he's not delivering. Those are the things that I have an issue with. I would love to hear what you guys and girls have an issue with right here. Leave it in the comment section and make sure you share this video with any New York Giant player that you may know because they need to be woken up. They suck. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time, maybe sometime during the week. Be sure to subscribe, share. We're on iTunes, Android, G Myers World. One love.